congratulations on completing the exercise and on writing code to generate multinomial random variables and on writing yet another code that computes a histogram. In this exercise, we are going to look again at the code that we use to generate multinomial random variables so that in the next task, you can modify this code in order to generate a Poisson random variable. Before we get onto that, however, let's first briefly summarize the code that you wrote in the last task to generate multinomial random variables. As I discussed in the last video, we can generate multinomial random variables by using the elements of the probability mass function to generate a segmented line of length 1 as shown here. Any code to generate multinomial random variables starts by generating a uniform random variable and then uses this segmented line to make a decision about the value of the final multinomial random variable. As shown in the code on the right-hand side of the slide here, the value of the multi multinomial random variable is set equal to 0 if the uniform random variable falls within the blue segment of the line. If the uniform ran random variable falls within the green segment of the line, by contrast, the multinomial random variable is set equal to 1. Lastly, if the uniform random variable falls into the red segment of the line, the multinomial random variable is set equal to 2. As discussed at the start of this video, to complete the next task, you're going to have to use an idea similar to the one that was just explained to generate Poisson random variables. As you have hopefully learnt from elsewhere, the probability mass function for the Poisson random variable is given by the expression shown at the top of this slide. If we draw the probability mass function on a bar chart, it would thus look something like this. Well, strictly speaking, it wouldn't look exactly like this, as the Poisson random variable can take any integer value from 0 up to infinity, so it is not possible to draw. The last time we dealt with a random variable that could take integer values up to infinity, we had to use a while loop, and we're going to have to do the same thing here for the Poisson random variable. To explain how this algorithm works, however, and so as not to give you the complete answer, I'm going to explain it on a simpler multinomial random variable that can take one of four possible values. As we did for the three outcome multinomial random variable, we are going to start by dividing up the range between 0 and 1 into segments with lengths corresponding to the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, and 3 when we generate our multinomial random variable. This is what is shown in the multicolored line here. As we saw in the previous slide, our algorithm would return a uniform our algorithm will generate a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. We will call this random variable u. If u falls in the blue part of the line, the multinomial will take a value of 0. If u falls in the green part of the line, the multinomial will take a value of 1. If it falls in the red part of the line, it will take a value of 2. And if it falls in the purple segment, it will take a value of 3. Lastly, for obvious reasons, the divisions between the blue, green, red and purple parts of the line are at the values shown here. Let's now start converting these ideas to computer code. The first part of the computer code that we're going to use is shown here. Most of this should be familiar to you by now, so the only part I'm going to explain is the creation of the list called PMAS. The elements of this list are equal to the elements of the probability mass function. So P0 is equal to 0.2, P1 is equal to 0.4, P2 is equal to 0.1, and p3 is equal to 0.3. Also, my diagram at the top of the slide is clearly not even close to being to scale. Let's now introduce the rest of the code that we are going to use. To understand how this code works, let's begin by looking at what happens to the variable that we return, as this will be the final value our random variable takes. The value that we return is called var, and if we look at what happens to this variable elsewhere in the code, we see that it is initially set equal to 0. Then, every time we go through the loop, the while loop, this variable is incremented by 1. We also see that before the while loop is entered, a uniform random variable, u, between 0 and 1 is generated. In addition, we set a variable called pp equal to the first element of the probability mass function. Consequently, if u is less than p0, the variable var is never incremented and our function returns 0. This makes sense as the random variable 
U is in the blue segment in this particular case. If u is greater than pp, however, then we enter the loop. The variable var is incremented by 1, and p1 is added to pp, so its value shifts to the end of the green segment. On the second time through the while loop, we are thus testing if u is greater than p0 plus p1. If this condition is not satisfied, then u must be in the green segment of the line, the function will stop and we will return a value of 1. If u is greater than p0 plus p1, however, we will go through the loop again, increment var by one further time, and shift p1, pp by adding p2. When we run the test in the while loop, we are thus testing whether or not we are in the red segment of the line. If u is in this segment, the program finishes and a value of 2 is returned. If, by contrast, we are not in this segment, we must then run through the we must then be in the purple segment, so the function will eventually return 3 after running through the while loop one final time. To be clear, the algorithm shown on this slide uses the same idea as the algorithm that was on the very first slide. It is shorter, however, because we make use of the while loop. Using this while loop makes it easy to extend to generate multinomial random variables where the number of possible outcomes is very large, or even, like the Poisson case, infinite. In fact, using this idea to write a program to generate Poisson random variables is the aim of the next task. As you do this, remember that you have the explicit expression shown at the top of this slide that will calculate the elements of the probability mass function for the Poisson random variable. You thus do not need to create a list containing the elements of the probability mass function at the outset of your function. This is in fact impossible as the list would need to have an infinite number of elements. Further note that calculating factorials is straightforward. You do not need a factorial function. Consider the following code, for example. This will calculate and print the factorials of the first 20 natural numbers. In short, the content of this slide should be more than enough to get you started on the next task. So, as always, good luck.